The Welcome to Yorkshire Ewar Festival is just days away and hopefully will take place in blazing sunshine like this. And of course it represents something of an annual pilgrimage for trainers all around the country wanting to take back some of the White Rose County bounty and new market handlers have traditionally had a very strong record at the four day festival. Hardly surprising given the strength of the racing. Three fantastic group ones, of course the Judmont International in which we'll see Frankel and Co this year, the Darley Yorkshire Oaks and the Coolmore Nunthorpe Stakes, all complemented and offset by one of the great handicaps in, in Europe, the Betfred Ebor. I've come to the Jockey Club rooms here in Newmarket to try and catch up with a couple of trainers from HQ who are hoping to head to Yorkshire and do well this time around. And the first man we coaxed here was the Godolphin racing manager, uh, Simon Crispin. Simon, another good strong hand um, for York and some kind of intriguing horses that are just slipping under people's radar a little bit. I was particularly interested by the two in the in the Great Voltager. NQ just went down at, at Goodwood and your new recruit Energizer. How's Energizer settled in? He's settled in really well. He's a very nice colt. Um, he's very much for next year. As a four-year-old, I think he'll stamp his ground in the in the big international races. But just for the moment, he's settled in well. Um, he, he put up a really eye-catching effort over a mile and a quarter at Royal Ascot. We purchased him after that race with a view for ne next year, really. Mm. But if he can run well in the Great Voltager, then it puts him in line for a bid for the Ladbrokes and Ledger. Mm. And we do expect him to run well. He's, he's a really nice horse. Do you expect him to beat Enki? I think he's as good as Enki, or the same sort of horse as Enki. Um, well, I mean, this will tell us, obviously, but uh, he, he's interesting, very interesting. And what is it about the Goodwood running of Enki that makes you think he can turn the form round with Noble Mission? Well, we hope he can turn the form round, and he, he, he just, he, you know, he was a little bit inexperienced at Goodwood, and uh, I think that there's every chance that, um, you know, he's grown up a bit and learnt a bit, and obviously Goodwood's not the most straightforward track to race on, and the Knavesmire could be a better race course for him to, to show his real merit and there's no reason why he couldn't reverse placings with Noble Mission but vice versa you might say the alternative but we like our chances anyway. Will you have another bash at Frankel with Fahar? We might do, it, it depends, all of a sudden the race is looking a bit punchy now, I mean, forget Frankel but the others and you know with St Nicholas Abbey and uh, you know, Nathaniel possibly running and obviously uh, Sri Prutra and you know twice over suddenly he's in the picture so we, we might just think about it but the, the only reason why we'd be happy to go to finish second is because of the timing of the race we would want to try and get two races into him before Kipco champions meeting so you know it's, it's, it's about the timing more than anything and obviously the ground if we get the ground sometimes you've got to go where the ground is you've got a good clutch of stairs at the moment why have you chosen cavalry man to fly the, the royal blue flag in the lonsdale well the only two possibles we had for this race were cavalry man and color vision color vision ran at goodwood we kept we freshened cavalry man up and missed goodwood purposefully for this um and I think that with Colour Vision, you know, he probably, there's nothing of him. He, and he put up a good effort at Goodwood, but it was hard on him. Yeah. So we'll keep him fresh for Doncaster. Two and a quarter miles will suit him well. Cavalry Man, he, he's done really well in, against smaller fish. And now he's back up to running against some better quality horses. It's, you know, it'll be tough for him, but he's in good form. You've an entry in the, in the Coolmore Nunthorpe Stakes, a horse called Soul, who ran extremely well in the, in the Diamond Jubilee. Um, would five be on the sharp side for him? Definitely, especially if it's quick ground, he might get outpaced. Um, if it was soft ground, you could sort of fancy his chances a bit, but he needs, he really needs to get his toe in and, and again, he needs a run before the Brett Sprint Cup, so it's a question of where do we run him? And we'd probably rather run him over five than seven at the moment, so I don't think we could realistically go there fancying his chances, especially if the ground was on the quick side. And would you fancy either of your chances in the Betfred Ebor? Well, I think the handicap has probably got them absolutely spot on. But he's which, got everything in the race. Yeah, yeah the he thing. has. But, you know, I, ours are going to have to run better than, obviously, their handicap ratings to win. I'm not sure. We might put a hood on Alcamos to see if that can do something better. You know, he, he's been running over a mile and a quarter. So we want to see what he can do over a mile and six. And uh, we'll see what happens with him. Willing foe. He ran really well at Ascot last time, but not well enough, really, to give you a, to make you think you're well in for the Betfred Evil. So I'm not sure. But both will run. 
but would I be backing them? I'm not certain about that. So Simon Crisford there, candid and as forthright as ever about the chances of the Godolphin Runners at York's Ebor Festival. What of his near neighbour Roger Varian, whose Kremlin House stables have been in really good form this last fortnight? He came to chat to us here at the Jockey Club rooms as well. And I began by asking him about his strong clutch of two-year-olds that were entered for this year's festival, including the gym crack entrant Morrowich. He's, uh, he's really come out of uh, the Malcolm Stakes very well. Very pleased with him. I think he's improving. I think he's a smart two-year-old. And I think, the, I think the six furlongs at York will suit him in the gym crack. I presume you're hoping that there won't be too much rain between, between now and the gym crack. I'm dying to get him on fast ground. Um, you know, proper fast ground. Proper, yeah, far, yeah. You know, good to firm, good flat racing ground. A lovely flat action of a horse. And I think um, you know, the quicker ground you know, will bring out a little bit more improvement in him. He's, um, he's shown he's uh, versatile and he can handle you know, most grounds. He's, I think we've gone on good to soft at Ascot, soft ground at Sandown and you know, perhaps slightly sticky ground at Goodwood and he's run very well. But I, I do think, um, and I know Neil thinks, we'll, we'll see a better horse on top of the ground. Do you think he is your best two-year-old as things stand? I'm not going to label him as my best two-year-old, Nick. I've, I've fortunately got some, some nice horses there which have you know, won their preliminary starts and they've got to go and make the jump up in grade now and, and go and uh, you know, win the group, group race. Um, but no doubt he's, uh, he's a very smart two-year-old. He's a very mature, strong horse. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think he's going to improve and, you know, he's got the physical scope to, you know, to keep improving. Um, I'm really looking forward to running him at York. Rocky Ground is in the Jim Crack and the DBS sales race. He's more likely to go to the sales race, I gather? I think so at the moment, yeah. It's um, something I've spoken about with his owner and, uh, again, he's, he's a smart horse. I, I like him a lot. He, he won his maiden very well first time, um, perhaps without having much of a, a race and an education. And, he just got uh, perhaps caught out um, being a little babyish in a muddling conditions race um, last time, but I think he'd have learnt a lot that day and you know, we go to York um, excited about his chances as well. Some of the horses we're more familiar with, we're familiar with no horse um, more than Sri Putra as, as regards your yard. Hood and Blinker seems to do the trick last time in the, in the York stakes. Will you run him in the international against Frankel? We'll certainly consider it, Nick. Um, you know, if it looked like coming up fast ground, then there's every chance he'll run. You know, that, that fast ground brings out uh, his best performances. And he's shown before on, on, you know, good to firm ground, but, you know, he can be placed at the, at the highest level. Um, with Frankel running, we'll be realistic. We'll probably compete him for second, third, stroke fourth place. And I think, um, you know, summing up conditions before declaration time, uh, you know, would, would ultimately decide whether we run or not. But he's in good form, a horse. And a horse who looked in tremendous condition before the York Stakes. Has he held that condition well? He holds his condition incredibly well, Nick. He's really, uh, you know, he's really a, a, a big, strong horse. And, you know, racing doesn't seem to take an awful lot out of him. Um, Is that because he doesn't give himself too hard a race? Well, you know, possibly. But, uh, you know, at York, to be fair to the horse, he showed what he can do. And it was, um, it was a strong group, too. Um, you know, he's... A, he's a, as everyone knows, he's been placed in two eclipses and placed in the Prince of Wales. And although he was unplaced in both races this year, both races were run on good to soft, soft ground. And, you know, back on fast ground at York, he showed what he's capable of. He seems to be one of those horses that, that's a character, but a character that people have become quite fond of. Well, I think it comes with horses hanging around, doesn't it? And he's six year old now. And um, he was a group winning two year old. So he's uh, been on the radar for, for a while and he's perhaps been a little bit inconsistent but he has run some very good races so people are familiar with him and I think as people get more familiar with horses they they get perhaps more attached to them. Of your other group one entries during the course of the week um, one of the most interesting is Shimmering Surf in the in the Darley Yorkshire Oaks I mean there's nothing necessarily to suggest she's a she's a group one mare but she's very consistent do you think she could overachieve in a, a race against her own sex? I think you'd know what you're going to get from her when you run and you know she's been an ultra tough solid uh, consistent filly this year winning a group three and being second in two two group two races um there's no reason to think that she'd uh, you know run below par although we only ran at Deauville on saturday so if we were going to turn up at york it would be a quick run and mm. i'd only run if i was sure that she was ready to give her all again um, and our rain won't run and our rain won't run and have you got to the bottom of why she's not performing? Well, you know, not 100%, um, Nick. She's, 
ultimately I don't think she's going to be a mile and a half filly and that would be the deciding factor I think as to not to go and run in the Yorkshire Oaks. Um, we were a little disappointed with her Goodwood run, you know, there was a lack of pace which I, I don't think suited her. But even so, um, you know, I was really very happy with her condition going into the race, so, you know, it's, it's um, we, we have to go back to the drawing board a little bit, um, you know, it might just be that we've got to wait mm. to, to the autumn for her to truly come back to herself again. Beyond Desire is your entry in the in the Coolmore Nunthorpe Stakes. If if they had four and a half furlong races, she'd be a champion, wouldn't she? She really would. You know, she's she's super fast. Um, in great form earlier this year, winning a list race at Bath and a Group Three, Pre Saint Georges at uh, Longchamp. You know, she'd had a good holiday midsummer. She'd had a good month out at Paddock, and um, I was really pleased how she ran at Goodwood. You know, she was bang there at the furlong marker, and just uh, I'm, I'm sure she needed a run in the last furlong. I think she'd come on for the run. Um, if we run at York, um, Hortensia, who was very impressive at Goodwood, will be hard to beat if she can reproduce that form. But, you know, I think as we find in these sprints, it's probably been a few years since we had a, a, a champion sprinter who's, who yeah. stamped his class every time he ran. And, um, you know, you, you good solid group three form, you can run very well at the highest level and hopefully she'll, she'll run very well next week. Of the remainder of your entries, which one appeals to you the most? Um, you know, there's a few horses uh, I'm looking forward to running at York. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to running Fur Doors in the Gulcher Stakes, mile in a, a half-listed race for fillies. I think she's really coming to herself now, and I'd be disappointed if she didn't put up a, a really good show. Um, Sri Putra, not sorry, not Sri Putra, uh, Eat, Eaton Forever could be a possible for the City of York Stakes, a listed race over seven furlongs. And um, very much ground dependent if it, if it happened to come up soft, uh, Mijar could run in the strengths of stakes. Roger, thanks for chatting to us. No problem.